Welcome back to the show. Joining us now to talk about sex and relationships is sexologist Dr. Limor Blockman. Hi, Limor. How you doing? Hi, you're good. Happy, happy International Women's Day. To I you see as you're well. rocking the red lip. We're yes. doing the red. <laughs> lots, of, <laughs> lots of red today on yeah, TV. Yeah, you have to entertain that. And not just on our channel. You're really seeing it everywhere. It's really I know. cool. Um, so we're going to talk about sexual fluidity. Explain yes. what that is. Okay, so sexual fluidity is the ability to actually find both sex, both genders attractive. Now it sounds, uh -huh. you know, when I say it to people, they say, oh, bisexuals, right, they're just right. greedy. They just want everything. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not really necessarily true, and I'm going to analyze it a little. So I'm going to go and tell you about a study that they did in Sweden that covered close to 2,000 people, which is very mm. big. It's a very large scale. And uh, it, of course, encompassed men and women. And what they asked them is for them to define themselves, whether they are fluid, meaning they are bisexual, they're mm -hmm. in between, they're not sure, they're curious, pansexual, there's also, so, also different uh, def definitions different of Different categories. It. Yes. <laughs> or maybe they are fixed, as you okay. would say. They are heterosexual or homosexual. What came out of it was very interesting. A few findings came out of it, one of which was not that surprising, mm -hmm. that women were twice as fluid as men. Really? Yes. Now, that means a lot of things, and I'm going to analyze them, okay. but I want to start and say that Kinsey, Alfred Kinsey, mm -hmm. the, 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 the master and, you know, the father of human sexuality, actually created a scale between zero and six when zero was heterosexual and six was homosexual all mm -hmm. the way. Most people fall in between. It's just oh. easier, yes, most people do. It's just easier for us to put, put people into boxes. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm saying that women were twice as uh, fluid, I mean that, uh, for instance, when men uh, take some form of interest, when heterosexual men take some form of interest in other men, mostly they testify that it was because of uh, the challenge, because of the experience, mm -hmm. something like that. For women, it was just attraction to a person, gender unrelated. Really? So they just see people for who they are as yeah. humans? Yes. Uh -huh. They just found that person, it happens to be a woman, attractive for that matter. Mm -hmm. So it's it's much less, you know, that intense than we like to think about it. Um, other, other than that, maximal fluidity was between the ages of 25 and 35 in this study, hmm. meaning that generally in this decade, in this young decade, people were just not really trying to change their orientation, but actually maybe just expand it, maybe mm -hmm. just experience, maybe just consider something that was a little different than what they were used to. Another thing that they found was that fluid women were very uh, open-minded, not religious, obviously, and fluid men had higher education level. Really? Which is very interesting. That's super interesting. Yes, and another thing that was interesting was that um, women, fluid women had more sexual partners, but fluid men didn't. Actually, fixed men, men that testified that were either heterosexual or homosexual, had many more sex partners. Wait, no, because I would think the opposite. Yeah, but really? that wasn't the result. Huh. Yes, it was very interesting. So these things are all uh, a part of this research, and mm -hmm. I wanted to say that one of the leading uh, researchers in the field of sexual fluidity is Lisa Diamond. Okay. And she assessed that uh, maybe there's a possibility that evolutionary, uh, evolutionarily uh, there was a reason why women uh, find other women accessible, approachable, maybe even sexual. Mm -hmm. And for the reason that uh, in the past, polygamous marriage, and note that I'm saying polygamous, which is not polygamous. Yeah, I was going to correct you. Right, right? <laughs> okay, so there's something that there's is something, called polygamous. Right, polygamous is only the man has a few spouses, okay. not the woman. So polygamy applies to both sides of ah, this equation. So, so this in the past, men. yeah. So in the past, men used to take many wives, and then there was some animosity and some intensity between the wives, and having some form of a, um, a spiritual or even sexual relations with other women kind of uh, eased it down and made it more accessible, you know, to kind of tolerate the fact that you share a partner. Mm -hmm. so, so in certain cultures this just evolved over yeah, time. Yeah, it just evolved and when we look at it we have to understand that in, in general society most women do find other women attractive mm -hmm. but or maybe even sexual. But the thing is that uh, we're so uh, closed in boxes that society is dictating to us. It's very hard to even ev admit to it. Mm -hmm. And I really would want to say if you box yourself up for other people, quit doing it. 
It really doesn't matter because honestly, how you define yourself really doesn't matter to anybody except for yourself. And there's a nice quote from one of my favorite poets, Charles Bukowski, mm -hmm. that said, uh, all that matters is how well you go through the fire, you walk through the fire. And yeah. who, uh, you know, the person that really generates or, you know, decides on the, the level of this fire is yourself. Yeah. So, you know, That's just accept advice. other people. Sexual fluidity is, really exists, and for women especially, it does exist for men, but on a lower scale, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, as you said, it's not the same thing as being bisexual. It's, no, it's different. not the same thing. And even people that are bisexual maybe play on this scale on mm -hmm. a different kind of level. Mm -hmm. It really, but the main idea is to really not try to box yourself up yeah. and not to define other people. We do it in Western societies mm -hmm. and it's very culturally based. Well, staying with the fluidity, just let it flow, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Always good advice coming yes. from you. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you.